Hey, hey, what's going on? The big question is, <laughs> is anybody going to hang out? Is anybody going to come by? I hope everybody's doing great. Um, thought we would do just like a virtual kind of a happy hour. I've got my beverage of choice. If anybody is out there in Facebook Live land, YouTube land, wherever, and you want to hop on, just let me know. We're here hanging out, uh, just me and the kid. Oh, what a day it's been. Busy, busy. Oh, it's my good friend. Hi. Hi, how's it going? I'm here going through Facebook, and you're asking me to grab a drink and hang, and I'm like, sure. <laughs> That's funny. Hey. I know. How's it going? Good. How's it going with you? Good. You know, just chilling out. Uh, yeah. Nothing exciting. Um, <laughs> but I thought we would do another one of these to see who else wants to join us. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I shouldn't be the only one doing this. <laughs> I know. It's just good. People are going to talk. Uh, so how's it going? Oh, it's going good. Um yeah, I'm still recovering from Podfest. <laughs> oh, let's start. how did that go? It went really well, actually. Um, okay. And they, they actually did manage to do to get the Guinness Book of World Records. Oh, they did. Yeah, I think so. I think they're still confirming at at um, the Guinness people because uh, they need a couple of weeks, I think, to actually confirm that it actually oh. happened. Oh, how do they how do they verify the information? Uh, I think that Chris Kermitzos had to provide like screenshots and and show people, you know, what was going on and have the registration numbers and all of that kind of stuff. So it all needs to be oh, okay. confirmed. But um, it's looking good. I mean, don't see why nice. not. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, to get to have an event that's virtual like that. And that sort of thing, I think, is a big deal. Yeah, it was huge. Um, and they used the Whova app for the entire convention. Okay. It worked really well. It worked really, really well. The only thing that disappointed me was that now that we're all home, we're not all using our phones for this no. kind of stuff. So I would have preferred if their web browser-based option for Whova had been a little more robust. It didn't match up to what the mobile experience was. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah, it was, it was kind of different. They, I think they did the best they could in the time frame they were given because it kind of got big really fast. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, those types of things, you just never know how they're going to go. And yeah. it seems like that just kind of took off exponentially. Yeah. Well, I, what Chris did was really smart in that he invited around 80 people who were like mega fans of PodFest and had them all help him seed the funding for the beginning of all of this. Okay. So it was an Indiegogo campaign and you could get, um, you know, Inner Circle and VIP tickets at a fairly reduced price by supporting it that early. and. Um, I was lucky enough to be part of that. So uh, I was happy to help, you know, get it under, under, underway. And, and it worked out really well because he had that. I don't think he, um, the amount that he was trying to raise at that point was only like $5,000. It wasn't a whole lot of money. But because people, I think, ended up funding it up to like 367% over or whatever that was. Um, he was like, well, yeah, there's, there's a need for this then. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it's interesting. I'm still blanket hanging down behind me. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> the kids are playing. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's all good. That's, that's okay. Yeah. Well, well it seemed like it was a very cool and interesting event. And, um, you know, I actually, he's got his drink, 7-Up. Hello. I, um, yeah, I kind of missed out on it this time around. 
uh, but I kind of caught bits and pieces of replays and stuff like that. So yeah. it was a lot of fun. It was. And and I loved how they used um, uh, Hoover in order to broadcast the videos because you could be inside the app on your computer and just watch and, you know, connect on Zoom and connect in, in, I can't remember what it was. It was like Jimla or something like that. There was like this. Okay. Thing. This I can't remember what the name of it was. I'm probably getting it wrong, but there was some kind of um, a Zoom like option that you could have that was automatically um, okay in the Hoover app. So you could just like, yeah, you could just click a button and like go over. It was wow. Really so cool. it was like super streamlined. Yeah, it was. It was, and they did a great job. And they had like a week um, lead up to the actual week long conference. So for a week before, people were getting familiar with everything. They were chatting with one another. They were creating meetups. They were having topic discussions. Uh, it was just, it, it really was fantastic. And I'm a fairly new podcaster, and I really felt at home. And it was a very welcoming community of fellow podcasters of all stripes <laughs> so yeah yeah i mean with those types of things i think it's you know it's all about community and that sort of thing and really yeah. just getting people to come together and kind of support what the mission is right yeah and that right. sort of thing and i think that's really if you can reach that goal i, I guess my, i'm curious as to like how they were able to quantify like who was watching each session and like if there was like a bandwidth limit and that sort of thing or just kind of like people could jump in and out whenever they wanted to they could jump in and out whenever they wanted to and you could tell how many people were watching um they would actually display a number of how many people were watching at the same time okay. um and i don't i think it was within the Hoova app it was all within the Hoova app so they were regulating it that way, but I don't know that there was a bandwidth per se. What was really cool about this whole experience though was because it was virtual, people could sign in from anywhere around the world. Okay. okay. So there was a Spanish track, there was a black podcasters track, there was a, a Indian, a East Indian track. There was like a whole, a whole bunch of, of different uh, ethnicities and, and, areas in the world and a uh, whole big UK contingent. And I know there were people from Canada there. And so it wasn't just the U S it wasn't like U S center. It, there were a lot of people from the U S there. I mean, the podcasting community does tend to be dominated <laughs> by a lot of people. In the US. <laughs> but, but at the same time, there was some nice representative from people all over the world, which was really cool to see in this kind of a virtual environment. Where it was possible. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah, it was kind of well, neat. that's fantastic. And I think, you know, the events like this are gonna kind of just continue to go that way. Like I think that's gonna be the standard for a while, you know. I hope so, actually. It was really enlightening, you know. Um I I loved seeing and learning about all of the different podcasters around the world because they're all in different stages of figuring it all out. And um, we, I think there was a, there was a woman who was doing podcast editing from India and she was used to doing editing for podcasts in North America for the most part. And instead, by the end of the conference, she was saying she was actually getting contacted by Indian podcasters, which wow. was fantastic because it's fairly new over there. That's so crazy. You can yeah. Climb. Um, yeah, you know, I think the interesting thing about it is, is that it's just going to continue to grow and grow and get bigger. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then all around the world, virtual is going to be the key, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, people, well, a, lot, a lot of people are listening to podcasts because <laughs> they're at home. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's interesting too. It's like, that's all people have time to do is, yeah. You know, or if they're going to and from somewhere, although some places are kind of starting to open up a little bit more, you know, I think that consumption is just going to be um, a lot more and more, you know, like more people are going to get interested. You know what I'm saying? 
Definitely. Yeah. I think it's a good thing. You know, there's apparently like um, over a million or something uh, podcasts that are on Apple right now. Not all of them are active. I think there's like 850,000 that are active. Yeah. But the number's growing every day. <laughs> so Yeah. You know, it's like I didn't, when I kind of started out, I was learning about like how much was actually active versus like how many had been on there for years and like how the metrics were so off and in the, in the sense of, you know, it was kind of like, um, what am I trying to say? <laughs> like the new and noteworthy and all of that wasn't a hundred percent accurate because of the fact that it hadn't cleaned things up in a long time. And then, Something happened and more people got involved and eventually started cleaning house mm -hmm. and, and deleting podcasts that hadn't had, you know, recent episodes within so many weeks or months. Did you did you hear about that or I haven't heard of them deleting anything? Um, yeah, like I, my understanding was is they got rid of a bunch of stuff, if I understand correctly. It could be. I, I, I think it's a I you know, I don't know. I, I don't know what I don't know what to feel about that, because even if a podcast hasn't been produced for a while like if it's pod faded or whatever you call that i still think it's valid uh, yeah it depends sure. on what the subject matter is and how good the podcast was but you know like i i produced a podcast before my current one and and i'm okay with it being online for as long as people want to hear it <laughs> yeah no no i agree with you but i think some of these have been on there for like five or six or seven years yeah and there had been no episodes recorded and they were like showing up in like all of these new and noteworthy i don't know i mean yeah. I, I i think the trick is not that i even know if that makes a difference to be honest but i think just continually putting out solid content and that sort of thing i think is the key right Sure. Yeah, I, I totally agree. But yeah, I, I it just depends on what people want to listen to. But I think in five or six years, for instance, the technology has changed uh, yeah. and become much more accessible and much easier to manage. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the early podcasters may not sound all that great. <laughs> no. <laughs> you never know, but yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I think, think it's just it would be removed. <laughs> yeah. I was even talking to Chris Oxamana, who is the producer over at Corolla Digital, and he was telling me that, you know, he prefers good content over quality sometimes because mm -hmm. of just the fact that, especially when they had to pivot and everybody had to go remote, um, you know, for the lockdown and things. And at first they thought they were essential, like, you know, because it's such a small crew over there and they thought, oh, we're going to be fine. Mm -hmm. And then they decided, you know, OK, we're going to just go work from home now. And so he had to go to like six different people's houses to set up studios, all of them in varying degrees of, you know, whatever. And then they used Zoom because they wanted somebody just to be able to click and be able to start talking and then have a good show. And then they would go through later and, you know, clean it up and try and make it sound as good as possible. So, you know, I think the future of podcasting is, is bright and um, it's, I don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon. Right. No, I totally agree. Yeah. I, I think also that there is a bit of a void where radio is falling down. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. Um, not that I think radio is a bad thing at all. I, I, I know a lot of people who listen to it, but a lot of people were listening in their car. Right. And no one, well, not no one, but a lot of people aren't driving as much as they used to. No, not as <laughs> so, much at all. Yeah. So, I mean, your, your choice is, I guess, stream it online where you're, when you're home or listen to a podcast that's a little more personal. Yeah, 100% agree on that. I think, you know, um, and just kind of like keep putting out content and it is kind of taking the place of radio on some level. Uh -huh. um, I even think for a while, some stations, they were probably just working, you know, from home and doing their broadcasts there, you know, and the quality of it was varying depending on the station. It was funny, Chris was saying like when this all started, their rubric of measure was well, what is Stern doing? <laughs> They're like, what is, 
what is he doing? Well, we sound better than Howard, so we're cool. You know what okay. I'm saying? So they're yeah. like, okay, we know kind of where this is all going and what's going to happen. And um, they just, that was like how they decided um, how it was going to work. And, you know, and since then they've obviously improved and gotten better on, on so many different levels and will continue to as long as, you know, now I think Adam and him and a few other people go into the studio and then that's the extent of it. You know what I'm saying? And then everybody else still works from home. Yeah. Yeah. I actually uh, saw a picture from a colleague of mine who went into a voice studio, voiceover recording studio just recently here in downtown Toronto. And I saw the picture and what the picture showed was that they had like covers on the earphone pads Funny. and a cover on the microphone. <laughs> so I'd never thought of that before. I was like, well, that's cool. That's an interesting idea. So I, they're all adapting. They're doing what they have to. Some people are bringing their own, their own cans, you know, like you do what you got to do, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, this will forever change, especially radio stations where you have mm -hmm. DJs coming in one after the other and hot breathing on the mic, you know, close yeah. talking uh, spitting to be gross here, but like all the things that go on, it happens. You know, the microphone, yeah. And it used to be we would just like Lysol it down, you know, and that was like the extent of it. But yeah. I think people are going to be a lot more weary or a little bit more like um, aware, right? Like not so much just like here we go. Let's uh, you just kind of half it and hope that we're safe because <laughs> nobody wants to get sick. No, um, definitely not. But you know, I, I have to say, I really don't think like from my perspective as a voice actor, I don't think I need to be in the studio. No. Studios don't have a place. They certainly do have a place because the client may want to go in there and, you know, have their coffee and catered lunch while they, you know, direct and and they can still do that remotely while the studio takes care of all the tech so that makes it easy for them or everyone can be at home while the studio coordinates it all so i don't think that there's not a place for a studio the studio still needs to be there but i don't think that i necessarily need to physically be in that studio <laughs> well if somebody wants to direct you i mean they can just they can do, do it, it remotely you. yeah totally they can totally do it remotely. Yeah, there's no reason that I need to actually physically be in the studio for that to happen. Well, no, especially if you have your sound treated area, you have your yeah. microphones, all your processing, exactly, um, editing tools and all of that. So really, like, unless, you know, it's like Pixar or something where you have to yeah. physically be in a studio with an actor you know, you're doing a cartoon. Ensemble casts. Yeah, they definitely yeah. need to be seeing each other. And it's harder to do that on Zoom because there's delay. So I can kind of see why people would do it in that sense. I mean, it's almost like being behind the camera, like in front of the camera. Sorry. Sure. Uh, you know, because it's so much, uh, it, it relies so much on the energy from your, your co-actors. So I Yeah, I yeah. Yeah. But, but yeah, 100%. for me, like I, I, all they're, they're only hearing me. <laughs> so they don't need to see me. What do they need to see me for? <laughs> and it's yeah. cool. They can actually record my voice on their end using software. Um, there's something called Source Connect or yeah. IPDTL, which is like another, you know, through the internet thing. There's all sorts of ways that they could record me on their end without, me needing to do anything other than connect and talk into my mic. <laughs> so there's so many ways that this can go down and it does not need to happen within an actual physical space. <laughs> no, you're like, I'll be happy to just do this at home and, and, and get paid that way versus, you know, having to drive somewhere and it's way more efficient. Oh my yeah. goodness, it's way more efficient. Yeah. And I, I, mean, I, I would make the clients happy too, because like, you know, they don't need to go anywhere either. <laughs> so I don't know. Source Connect, that's all done over the internet, right? Or is that how all sort 
It, it is and it isn't. It's a little less um, subject to the internet being difficult <laughs> because yeah. it's a software to software type of connection through Source Connect, Source Elements is the company. Okay. So through Source Elements um, servers, I guess. So okay. they have a bunch of servers and both of these um, softwares on, on either either end, they connect through the server to each other. So there's a bunch of packet correction that goes on with that connection that would be hard to happen with just an internet connection. Gotcha. So that's a little bit more advanced than like, say like a squad cast or a yeah. ringer or something like that. Cause you're not yeah. solely relying on internet to get your connection uh, done versus like, you know, real time processing and getting a really clean cut of your voice. Right. Cause you don't want crackles and pops. Um, especially yeah. if they're paying you to do it, you know, and as long as you're doing everything you're supposed to on your end, then that's all that matters. Right. Yeah. And I'll take a copy of the session when I'm doing it, I will record at the same time just so we have a backup. So usually if any, if there are any packet loss, op, you know, problems, uh, it's, it's with, with everything that can happen. Um, yeah. Then, yeah, they have a backup and they know that I can forward that file to them with no problems. But there's so much that can be done remotely now. It's amazing. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. Times are changing. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. And we're just kind of going into a whole new world, you know, and, and, uh, yeah. I don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon. It's only probably going to just continually improve. And mm -hmm. pretty soon, you know, I think like movie theaters and all this other stuff, I think, I don't know if they'll necessarily go away, but I think the demand will become less and less. And, and I think as unfortunate as this whole thing has been, I think it's taught us how to um, think on our feet and pivot quickly and, save our hides for a lot of people who have never had a, a robust online presence before, out, even outside of audio and podcasting. And just really, you know, now you can just turn your TV on and get whatever you want. And it's there, you know what I'm saying? With the click of a button. Totally um, true. I mean, obviously, you know, there's StreamYard, which allows us to kind of connect this way, uh -huh. which I find to be a lot stabler than uh, some other things that I've used before, to be honest. I don't know what it is, but um, like I've used Zoom and I feel like the connection's a lot less stronger. Uh -huh. um, but talking to you this way, we've had no interruptions, you know, and there's multiple things going on behind me. So um, <laughs> that is true, yes. <laughs> I digress. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. I'm I'm enjoying StreamYard. I've actually been on it a few times now. I haven't run it myself, but, but yeah, I mean it's off. cool. You know, I like it. Um, hey, Tim. <laughs> Tim is in the house. <laughs> yeah, Tim, jump on, dude, if you can. Yeah, We're here totally. for a little bit longer. <laughs> the link is in. The link is below. Um. So yeah. I think, um, yeah, Tim was at Podfest too. So, yeah, didn't he speak or he spoke at some one of those stuff? I think he did. Okay. Yeah. It's entirely possible. <laughs> I did not. I did a lot of watching and networking. <laughs> yeah. The virtual speaking has been kind of fun because I had never really done it before. But, um, you know, I think getting your message out and across is important. And, We'll do it by any means necessary, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, my goal when I went there was actually to find other podcasts to be on because I, I'm i really enjoying that. That was a lot of fun for me. So making connections with people who might possibly want me to be on their podcast was another reason I was there. And uh, yeah, yeah it, was, it was good. You know, just being a part of it was fantastic. Yeah, I think it's all awesome. Um, and uh, I just signed up for another one today to do oh, yeah. my show. So some other okay. conference, I'm not 100% sure what it is, but I figure <laughs> any exposure is good. That is true. Uh, 
yeah. As long I, as it's good exposure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> funny, funny. Yeah, it'll be good. What are you planning on talking about? Well, they want me to do an interview with somebody, mm -hmm. so I'll probably find somebody that I can interview and do like a some an actor or somebody mm -hmm. or a musician. I don't really know. Um, yeah. Someone who have would a be couple a possibilities. What's that? Someone who be, who would be a draw. Yeah, somebody who would be a draw. You know that mm -hmm. I could get my hands on quickly and. <laughs> That, you know, that wouldn't charge to do an appearance or something <laughs> yeah. like that. Cause I mean, it's different for an interview, but then like for a podcast, but then for like an event, then they start asking about money and that's true. And yeah. that sort of thing, which I understand. Yeah. They're a bit different. They are. Well, it's been 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> if I water. <laughs> your water and I know I need water too. <laughs> How has the weather been where you're at right now? What what kind of weather do you guys get? Um, what is 25 Celsius in Fahrenheit? <laughs> it's not theory. Because we're all in. What is 25 Mexico. Celsius in Fahrenheit? 76. 76. So good. Nice okay. weather. So yeah, that's, it's, well, it's been okay. Um, 76 now, but it's been a lot warmer. We've been in the 90s, and uh, that's really hot for here. And and yeah. it gets muggy, it get really muggy because we're like right next to the water, lake, not ocean, but oh, okay. <laughs> so wow. it gets pretty muggy, and bleh. <laughs> but you know, it's summer. <laughs> I know, right? What are you gonna do except complain? Yeah, we've got um, like three, four months, and then the rest is not fun. So, <laughs> anyway, uh -huh. ugh, good times. It was like 104 today. It's supposed oh, to cool really? off next week. So, are you guys getting storms? Not yet. We're supposed to. I think we had a few thunderstorms today. That's what they keep telling us. Yeah, that's why it's gotten a little cooler. <laughs> Yeah, they keep telling us it's supposed to do that, but I don't know. I'll believe it when I see it, mm -hmm. in my opinion. <laughs> well, that's good. I hope you get it. I hope it cools down a little. <laughs> I think so. Well, in any case, we'll go ahead and wrap this up. I got to tend to this guy and get some dinner yeah, I'm on just the table. He didn't join us. <laughs> that's all right. We'll do another one of these. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Jody, thanks for hanging out. Thanks. Thanks for All right, everybody. Me. We'll talk to you soon.